right, so we're gonna create our own Starry Night. We have been looking at Vincent Van Gogh and just been talking about his uh, Starry Night and uh, how he uses short little lines to express movement and how he uses these swirls and how he goes around his stars, his moon, and how his whole sky looks like it's full of these short little lines that are expressing these swirl, swirls and expressing this um, motion here in the sky. And then of course he's got the big tree here and he's got the town. And so he's layered this with the foreground with the big tree here um, in the foreground and then the middle ground here. And then of course the uh, sky is the background in this work of art. And so we're gonna make a very similar work of art sort of modernize it, make it our own. We're first gonna use crowns, and because we're gonna be using crowns, we're gonna use this very thin fabric. If you don't have very thin fabric, then um, just using a couple pieces of paper, like newspaper, that'll totally work. But we've got this fabric here in my classroom. Uh, it's like felt, so some, just some thin felt. And the reason why we're using that is because we want, we're gonna use crowns as a wax resist, um, so we're gonna be using watercolors here in a bit. And we want to make sure that when we color in our crowns, it gets totally colored in. And that's a great way to do that. So we're looking for the warm colors because what we're going to do is we're just going to use warm colors to create our stars and some swirls around. So that is our reds, our yellows, and our oranges. Okay, and that's all the shades of reds, yellows, and oranges, um, including red violet and also including um, even pink. So if you want to use pink, Technically is a red, so oh, technically a warm color. We're going to leave all of these, I still see a few warm colors in there, that's fine. Um, but we're going to leave all those cool colors in our box because we are not going to use those. Uh, we are going to use our warm colors for our stars. All right? So, some of you may know how to make a star and be really good at it and got your own style. Some of you may not. I'm going to go over two ways to make a star, just as a review. So there's the way that it, uh, I learned, which is just to sort of draw it out like that. And that's one way to make a star. You've never made a star before, and, and, and that's really confusing to you. Here's a trick. You can make an A with a really long horizontal, and then just go crisscross. And that is another way to make a star right there. So let me show you again. Make an A with a really long horizontal, like an extra long horizontal there, and then you go crisscross like that. Pretty awesome. So I'm gonna make some stars here. I like to make stars like that, just because that's the way I've always made stars. When you make your star, you need to then color it in really, 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 really well. Color it in really well like that. Fast forward here while I make my stars. All right, and so you're gonna go ahead and continue to color it in. And remember, you wanna color in really, 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 really hard. So draw in your stars with your warm colors and color in really hard. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to um, color in a moon. You can put in a moon if you'd like. And then we're going to make these dashed lines. So we're gonna make these dashed lines in these uh, wind curves. So you wanna make windy and curly lines. And do a dashed line and then do another dashed line right next to it in a different color and then another dashed line next to that in a different color and go around and you can see how I'm really filling up that space with all these dashed lines. And what those dashed lines do is they imply movement, which is what uh, Van Gogh was all about, is implying movement through these short little brush strokes. Now it's time to paint. Now I'm giving you guys these liquid watercolors. You could use regular watercolors, but I'm just giving you these liquid watercolors, which are actually watercolors that I've extracted from old used markers. So we are repurposing, we're reusing, which is really cool. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to use short little strokes of color. So I'm just starting with blue, because that's an obvious choice. And then you're gonna take a tissue and you're gonna blot it out. So you're just gonna dab, 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 dab. When you change colors, um, you're also going to use a tissue. So see, I'm just using short little strokes here. Doo -doo -doo just like Van Gogh did, and then blot, 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 and then I'm changing colors, I'm using the same tissue, and I'm just squeezing out, squeeze, 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 so I don't need a new tissue, because I can still use this one, squeeze, 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 and now it's all dry, 
and ready to change colors. I'm gonna use a little bit of green. I'm only gonna use a little bit of green. And if you look really closely at the actual Starry Night, you could see how the yellow and the blue mixed together ended up looking a little bit of green. But I don't want it to be too green. So I'm going to blot, I'm gonna squeezy, 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 squeeze until it's dry. And I'm gonna paint blue over that green. And it's gonna make it look like, sort of like a teal or an aqua. Um, so it's gonna look like a blue green. So it's still gonna look like a night sky. And I'm going back and forth, back and forth um, between the different colors and making those short little brush strokes. And blot, 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 so that my uh, crayon marks really show up. I'm going to use a little bit of purple in there. I'm going to use a little bit of blue, a little bit of green. I'm going to layer it up with these brush strokes until I have completely covered my whole painting up with uh, layers of cool colors. step is all about foreground, middle ground, and background. So the foreground is the front, the middle is the middle, and the back is the back. So the black is going to be the first one um, and then that we see, and then on top it goes on top of the middle, which goes on top of the back. So it's going to go just like that, because obviously the smaller buildings need to go in the front and the back um, it needs to be the tallest. All right, we're going to move that off to the side. We need to just move that off to the side if it's still wet. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to draw in our buildings. And remember, buildings are nice and straight, so we want some nice straight lines. And also, we don't want to cut it all the way down, so we're going to have a bit of a horizon line. So if you need to draw a line all the way across that you don't want to cut below, you can do that. Uh, otherwise, we're just going to start drawing in some buildings here. So as you can see, I'm going up and down to make a nice rectangle and I am making sure that I stay above that horizon line. This one's going to have a pointed roof and then I'm going to make another one with a slanted roof like that. I saw that downtown one time. And maybe I'm going to add a little porch here. I'm going to have kind of some fun with my buildings as I draw them out. And of course you can erase if you're using a pencil. So I'm just going to fast forward as you see how I draw some nice straight buildings and I stay above this line here. I want half my paper to um, stay connected because we want to keep this all one connected thing. So like I said, we want this to be all connected. So when I'm done, I'm going to put a little scribble line in the sky. That way I know that that is the part I want to get rid of. Because we're going to cut out the sky and we're going to leave the ground in the building. So cut out the sky and leave this part. All right, I'm going to fast forward and show you how I cut all of the uh, sky out, leaving the buildings connected. So then take those scraps and throw those scraps away. All right, now on the sloppy side, the side that has the pencil mark, we're going to add the glue. And when we add the glue, we make we screw it down, we pick its nose, we make sure it's clean. If it's got a glue booger, take that off, make sure it can breathe. Then we're gonna do a wiggle line on the bottom and a line up each building. That way the buildings will stay down. And the light gray, the lightest gray goes in the back. So glue that down really well, put that off to the side. Go get the middle gray. So the darker gray, we're going to do the same thing. We're gonna make some buildings. Now these are gonna be like sort of light commercial buildings, like office buildings. Now see, I'm using a ruler because sometimes it's hard to draw a straight line without a ruler. So you have a ruler if you'd like to draw your nice straight buildings. Rulers are great for drawing straight lines. Remember, this is sort of the suburban buildings. The Tall ones were the um, urban buildings, and then we're going to have residential. And see how I drew my squiggle lines in the sky there, so that I know which I'm getting 
fit it, getting rid of because we don't need the sky because we've got the cool starry night sky. Throw the scraps away and once again on the sloppy side, a wiggle line and a line up each building. Flip it over and look at that. How cool is that? It's starting to layer up a little bit, isn't it? And while the glue is still wet, I just trimmed off a little bit. Now this is going to be our houses, where the suburbs are, like the houses are going to be. So we're going to have more of the pointed buildings here. And they're going to be pretty small. Again, squiggle out the sky so you don't get confused. And again, you want to make sure that you have that nice base there for all the buildings to stay connected to, the ground to stay connected to. All right, and then the last thing we're going to do is we're gonna add the windows. So these are just a few people that are up at night. So I'm gonna take this little piece of yellow and I'm gonna cut it. Now things that are up close look big and things that are far, far away look itty bitty. So I'm gonna take these rectangles. I'm just gonna put a few rectangles here in the houses. Just a few parents staying up late reading. And then I'm gonna put just a couple of windows that are cut even smaller in the middle ground. And then I'm going to take those middle ground windows and I'm going to cut them so tiny. And I'm going to put those in the background. So I'm going to take those on so tiny, teeny tiny little windows, teeny tiny little windows for the background. Because things that are far away, so kitty bitty. So I'm going to take my glue stick and I'm just going to glue down. See how I just kind of glue down with glue stick. We're not going to use liquid glue because that would be too messy. Just some glue stick to glue down those tiny little windows. And we don't need a ton. Um, you want a few, but not a ton. So I'd say somewhere between 10 to 15 windows would probably be a good number for this particular cityscape. And there we go. So now I've got all of my windows at night. It looks fantastic. There is my modern starry night.